Hello and welcome to episode 298 of the TW 2020 Challenge Run. This is going to be the Clash at the Castle Premium Live Event here in Cardiff, Wales. And what a show we've got in store for you here. The main event, the next chapter in the rivalry between Seth, Wright, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. WWE Championship's on the line. It could be the last chapter because if Roman Reigns wins, Seth Rollins is gone from WWE. We have Drew McIntyre on his home island once again. Last year he came over here, he won the World Heavyweight Championship. He's not going to do that once again. He takes on Sheamus. Bianca Belair defends the Royal Women's Championship against the woman who claims she's the rightful champion in Rhea Ripley. We have other big matches like Finn Balor. Or should I say, Bala the Demon taking on Gunta. We have the SmackDown Women's Champion Kyrie Sane teaming with Yutami Hayashishta against Bailey and Dakota Kai. We have Warden versus Bobby Lashley. We have KSI and Logan Paul against Karrion Cross and Carland. And a whole lot more goodness. Without any more further ado, let's jump straight into the show. We start on the pre show, the first of two pre show matches. The first woman to make her entrance here in Cardiff is Tegan Knox, obviously, as she comes to team with her friend, Kylie Ray, the Smile and Shine duo, against the team of Ivy Nile and Tate and Paxley, Alexa Bliss is like, I guess, security, women, whatever they are. <laughs> and yeah, in 7 minutes 49, we're going to give Tegan the hometown win, Shiny Wizard, to Ivy Nile, 7.49. And Tegan and Kylie get the feel good hometown win here in front of 30,000. I imagine it's actually more than that, but that's just the game being weird because I'm doing it in the UK and apparently I've not got big enough firm base there. 60 for Kylie, 71 for Tegan, 31 for Tatum, and a 37 for Ivy. Yeah, yeah big <coughs> opening match and smile and trying to pick up the first win here in Cardiff. The second pre-show match is also getting home islanders on the show, but this time they're from England, Ridge Holland, Pete Dunne and Dudley Davis, against the undisputed trio of Bobby Fish, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. And it's the Englishman who pick up the win, of course. Big Dudley hits the Dudley device on Roderick Strong, pinning him 1-2-3 to earn the, right, earn the victory for the Regal Coalition. 87 for Pete Dunne, 79 for Dudley, 70 for Ridge, 91 for Kyle O'Reilly, 77 for Roderick Strong, and a 61 for Robert Fish. I mean, where is the lie? But there, well, Real Coalition and Smile and Shine, you know, two home island, I guess I'll call them, winners here on the kickoff show, just a feel-good moments for the live crowd, I guess, because they would be the faces here, despite being the dastardly heels on television. We then get the show intro. Running down the matches tonight, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Kyrie Sane, and Utami against Bailey and Dakota, and a whole lot more. And we're actually going to kick off with six-man tag team action. The grudge match. Big E, the former world heavyweight champion, cost that championship back at Unforgiven when Dolph Ziggler, of all people, Screwed him out of it in that fatal four-way match against Edge, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus. We then found out Ziggler was, you know, the new leader of the Grand Jury. He usurped Edge, kicked Edge to the curb, kicked the Viking Raiders to the curb, and brought in his own duo, Emerson Frost and Ken Cobain, while keeping Damian Priest, Scarlet, Julia, and Sonya around. Biggie then returned to get his revenge on the group. And here we are tonight's six-man tag team match. New Day, Grand Jury. And in a 14 minutes and 17 seconds, match gets a 77 rating. It is, of course, the Grand Jury who pick up the win. Ziggler plants Kofi with a super kick to score the win in 14 17. 82 for Xavier Woods, 76 for Kofi Kingston, 80 for Big E, 66 for Ken Cobain, 56 for Emerson Frost, and an 87 for Dolph Ziggler. He's really stepped up, you know. Good old Bandana Dolph has really stepped up 
in this role. Like, I knew he was doing all right. I knew he'd do well in the role, but, like, 87, he's doing a lot. He's doing very good in the role. And, yeah, the momentum keeps rolling. Grand Jury with a huge win here on a huge night. We then get an 89-rated match. A banger of a fatal four-way for the women's Liberty title. I told you that tag match that was in, I think it was an 87, the one on SmackDown, was a preview of tonight. And if anything, this one did even better. Shotzi defends against Alba Fire, Candice LeRae, and Tony Storm, you know. Had to get those two former NXT UK women's champions on the UK show. And Candice is just, you know, the best. She's got an 88 in this match. So, yeah. Big things coming up for her, I'm sure. But, in the end, it is Shotzi pinning Alba Fire with the ball pit, sent on, whatever, to make defence number two of the Women's Liberty title. Shotzi actually scores the worst in this match. She gets a 72, while Tony gets a 77, Alba gets a 76, and Candice gets to the 88, obviously. But again... I know Candice is the obvious choice to win it and hold it, but stories here, I have, don't worry about Candice. If anything goes according to plan as they are right now, don't worry about Candice. She'll get, she'll get her bone thrown at her one day, but I'm not going to flip the Liberty title over so quick. Shotzi's going to retain, pinning Alba, I guess. We then get, oh, the... <clears throat> Liverpool, listen up, Cardiff. I think it's a joke that the WWE is coming back to the United Kingdom and they pick a shite hole like Cardiff, Wales. Should be coming to the greatest city this side of the Atlantic. Should be coming to Liverpool. In case you don't know us, I am a hip. Fowler, this is Jagger Reed. We are grizzled young veterans, soon to be recognised as your reigning, defending SmackDown Tag Team Champions. That was actually my best Scouse, yeah, I think. Anyway, stadium full of people, shoes off, they all hate Zach Gibson. You know, if I could trust a whole crowd, a whole stadium full of people to do that bit, it would be in this country. And if we then get that match, DIY against GYV, gets an... <sighs> At least they kept the belts, right? Tommaso tore his stomach muscle. That sounds painful. Okay. It's this time of year, it was this time of year last year with these fucking cursed titles, and it struck again. <laughs> but DIY keep a hold of the belts, because Gargano submits Rip with the Gargano escape. I guess Tommaso was just outside of his torn stomach muscle. And they make defense number two of the SmackDown Tag Team titles, but it doesn't sound like their reign's gonna go on for much longer. Hello, this is Conan from the future here. As you can tell by the weird futuristic effect I have on my voice now. Um, Chandler's only out for like, I think it's 27 days. So while he is injured and can't wrestle, I don't think that's long enough to justify stripping the belt. So their reign will continue. 77 for Champa, 85 for Johnny, 67 for Jagger Reed, and a 74 for Rip Fowler of the grizzled young veterans. In case you haven't realised, big fan of saying grizzled junk veterans that way. But anyway, DIY celebrate in the ring. They, they, I guess Johnny does because Tommaso's injured. But the lights then dim and red, white and blue spotlights appear on stage. It is, oh no, 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 no. Major Gargano. No, no. You see... Mm, je m'appelle David Mato. Elle s'appelle Violet Mato. And we have arrived in the UK from the greatest country on earth, Francais. 
you know, just over the channel. And DIY your your reign as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions on Le Bleu brand. Oh no 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 no! It's not gonna last too much longer. He's he's actually he's actually right about that part. <laughs> because only a matter of time before you face my cousins, Malik, Blade, e Idris, Inofe, and then I guess we send them into the ring, Idris and Malik. And I was going to say DIY beat them up, but I'm not sure how physical Champa can get with that torn stomach muscle. So <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, I guess, single-handedly sends Malik and Edris packing. Because, yeah, they're French. They're coming out on the, the show in the UK because that would be funny because they they live right across the channel. And then they get comeuppance. Just a funny segment. Anyway, nothing funny about this. <laughs> Quite the juxtaposition, in fact, to go from La French Connection to Gunther versus Bala. And the entrance, Regal and Florence come out with him, nobody else, because... Um, actually, no. They're not on screen, but for something that I will address in a couple of weeks' time later down the line, the SmackDown portion of the Real Coalition that aren't the Grizzled Young Veterans, so Charlie Dempsey, Ilya Dragunov, and Joseph Connors, they can also come out with Gunter. Just not the three that are on the pre-show and not the GYV. And then we get the Demon Balor entrance. Stadium full of people throwing their arms up in the air in time with the music. What a sight to behold. As Gunter, the ring general, faces the Demon Balor. 86. Yeah, there we go. There's the real match between these two. <laughs> and yeah. 19 minutes and 14 this goes. The new side of Bala is, you know, he takes the fight to Gunter better than, you know, just Finn did. Back at Unforgiven, obviously. One spot, I don't know the logistics of it, because I don't know how Finn's paint works. But what I thought would be a cool spot, if I can, you know, set it up well. Gunter would, like, chop the demon in the chest. And, like, paint would come off, and, like, Gunter would have the black paint all over his hand. And then there'd be like a, a massive handprint in the demon paint where Gunter chopped him. And I just think that would be fun if I can some if I can get that to, in any way to work with any any kind of logistic. I just that, that's just a funny idea I thought of. But the Bal Balor the demon brings the fight. He takes the fight to everybody on the outside. You know, Regal and Florence get ejected, and the de the demon runs wild on Dragon of Connors and Charlie. He hits the coup de grace on Big Gunts. One, two, kick out. And then Gunter hits that big clothesline on the demon, rocking him. He hits that power bomb. One, two, the demon powers out. He fires up. He hits the four arms. Bang, bang, bang. Trying to take Gunter down. Hits that shotgun drop kick. Goes up top for another coup de grace. And then Gunter plucks him out of the air. Another big chop. Picks him up. Power bombs the demon. Then immediately picks him back up for a second power bomb, stacks him up, and Gunter pins the demon, one, two, three. Bow I put up a better fight than Finn did back at Unforgiven, but the Ring General scores the victory over Bala the Demon. Ninety five for Gunter, ninety three for Bala. This, you know, this fuse, like once Finn dropped the wild tile at, at Mania, he was really like just treading water for a while. This feud here has really reignited him. Look, 93 he's getting now. But he came up short. He couldn't get the job done. Even with the demon paint on. What will it take to stop the wrath of the ring general? 84. Um, Looking at the ratings, that seems fine, actually. I expected kind of better, but oh well. But... They actually overscored, depending on how well they did. And it's mainly Dakota. I think she's hit her cap at 70, which is lame. But <laughs> whatever. Anyway, it's the tag team match. There's no respect that most title match on this show. Um, There will be one... Actually, no, we'll get to that in a later segment. On, on SmackDown next week. But 
just keep a note, obviously, there's a, a PLE coming up in, in Tokyo in two weeks' time. <laughs> anyway, Bailey and Dakota against Kyrie and Yutami. 40 minutes, 48 it goes. Bailey has the champion down. Bailey or Kyrie kicks out. Yutami runs wild on Dakota on the outside, takes her down. And then Dakota and Yutami probably take each other over the barricade or whatever and take each other out of sight. Which leaves just Kyrie and Bailey in the ring exchanging strikes. And then they'd hit like a double strike at the same time and then they'd both fall to the floor. Now comes Cora Jade. We've not seen her since, you know, I think it was either like three weeks ago, Bailey sent her home after they lost to Amory and Kelsey. And she runs out, she's got the skateboard, and she's, she's going, oh, you know, getting in Bailey's face, going, what are you doing, bitch? It's me, I'm back. I, I've come back, and Bailey's like, oh, fuck off. Like, we're trying to win this match. You can really cost me this fucking match again. Then, bang! Cora clocks Kyrie with the, the skateboard. Hopefully it looks better than when she hit Roxanne with the skateboard in real life. But those them's the risks with breakable skateboards, I guess. And she sort of just looks down at Kyrie, then looks over at Bailey who's in the corner. Bailey strikes a big fucking shitty eating grin. Crawls over, picks Kyrie up, hits that headlock driver, the rose plant. And pins the SmackDown Women's Champion one, two, three. 70 for Dakota Kai, 76 for Bailey, 79 for Utami, and 86 for Kyrie. Cora just watches on on the outside, like just watching as Bailey scores the pin, and then after the match, Dakota calls back into the ring, as does Cora. And. <laughs> Bailey just sort of looks across at Cora, they, they share a look, and then Cora grins at Bailey, Bailey grins back at her. She's like, I knew you'd come around. And then they finally share a big hug in the middle of the ring, but. It's not it's not the same, you know. And then Cora stands in the middle like looking all smug, looking down at Kyrie as Bailey and Dakota have their arms raised behind her. And we now have an interesting looking trio here. Hmm. Darn. Seventy six. They finally no psychology here. And I said I think I said it's a wild brawl. Yeah, I did. But apparently they don't have enough enough psychology to call in the ring for 10 minutes without losing it, everyone. Warden beats Lashley. I've not covered it up. Warden beats Lashley with the power bomb in 959 to make Dunst number 4 of the US title. 83 for Lashley, 80 for Warden. What a champion. What a reign he's having right now. Another, possibly the biggest victory of his entire run. And it continues on. Ronnie Hughes powerbombed. Bronson Reed powerbombed. Ricochet powerbombed. And now Bobby Lashley also powerbombed. The almighty here in Cardiff. And they probably shake hands again because I want to establish that the Hurt Business are baby faces despite the fact that they're feuding with two other faces in Warden and Ricochet. They are still a face group because they're just cool. Like, why would I boo them? Adam Pearce then pops up on. He's not in there in person. It's a pre recorded on the Tyrant when he goes, ladies and gentlemen. We've experienced a lot of incredible moments on SmackDown recently, including the main event tonight, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. But the Blue Brand, you know, quite the run of history across its, you know, over 20, for over 20 years now of SmackDown. Which is why. We're having a history of SmackDown celebration this coming Friday. A special free hour episode of the show to celebrate all things SmackDown. Stars of the past, present, and future of SmackDown are going to be in there to celebrate the long-lasting legacy of the blue brand. See you then. That came out of nowhere. Well, the... um SmackDown will be celebrated next week. I guess, for some reason, Pierce wants to celebrate the history of SmackDown with a special three-hour um, special episode of the show. That's the in-kayfabe explanation. 
to completely shatter any reality of a fourth wall. The reason that's happening is because next week SmackDown, um, as you can tell by looking at the title of this video, it says TW Twitter Challenge on episode 298, Clash of the Castle pay per view. Which means in two episodes' time, SmackDown will be episode 300. And <laughs> what better way to celebrate 300 episodes than by three hours of SmackDown? I just need a explanation as to why to make that show in kayfabe three hours. So I guess Pierce just wants to celebrate SmackDown's history. There we go. And also debating, because this is a game and not real life, I am debating making SmackDown three hours permanently alongside Raw. And just to get like more content on it, feature more people and do shit like that. Because when I have SmackDown, it's going to be the pay-per-views coming up. Like the build to like some of the matches always feels less than compared to Raw. And also just like, yeah, just to make the, the shows more even. I I'm still not 100% sure I'm going to do it. I know Matthew just did it. That's what key, he's what gave me the idea. But like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe. But next week, at least, will be three hours. Because it's we're celebrating SmackDown's history, goddammit. Which, in layman's terms, translates to 300 episode special. I'm sure... Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins will be on the thumbnail dressed up in like King Leonidas or some shit like that. <laughs> anyway, we now get to the meat. We've had meat. We've had we've had Warden and Ricoch Warden and um, Bobby Lashley, but Sheamus and McIntyre. Sheamus won the World Heavyweight Championship three weeks ago at Unforgiven, dethroning Biggie, ending Biggie's reign that began back at WrestleMania. Andrew McIntyre, even on a quest to stop Sheamus. Ever since then, they brawled all around the arena two weeks ago. McIntyre's coming home. Will he end Sheamus's run after just three weeks? Or will Sheamus break the broken dreams? He will he cause the broken dreams here tonight. In an 89 rated match. Again, they keep telling me they've got no psychology to go 18 minutes 21 seconds, which I think is bull poo. But, I don't know, the game just seems to, you know, hate everybody that isn't named Brian Danielson. But, in 18 minutes and 21 seconds, Drew McIntyre doubles up, nails the Claymore on Sheamus, and for the second year in a row in the United Kingdom, wins the World Heavyweight Championship. Hopefully he can hold this one for longer than a month. Only Lorcan kind of fucked his reign up last time. <laughs> Drew McIntyre gets an 88. Sheamus actually outscores him. Um, so yeah, this was done multiple reasons. I knew, obviously, I wanted to put the belt on Drew at Clash of the Castle because, you know, it's a great moment and it would be a moment that would land and last the test of time whenever you talk about WWE in the United Kingdom. So, you know, it would be a great moment to do on a show like that because the crowd that was there live, which may include your favourite people, would have really enjoyed seeing it live. But then you decide to not do it because heat, and then you have him sing like an idiot. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, you get the cool moment of him winning. I know he did it at Wembley last year against Keith Lee, but you can never do it too much, I guess. And Seamus, like, I didn't have a long term plans for him to be the world champion. I just wanted to get a transitional heel in there to get it from Big E to Drew. And. Drew and Sheamus always going at it. They can always just, you know, feud. They're two of those people you can just put back together whenever you want, and then they'll have a banger. After banger, after banger, after banger. And, you know, he's been so good in real life, I just thought, you know, let's give him a, a quick three-week run just to, you know, say, say cheers, boss, for being such a king. <laughs> but, yeah, Drew, once again, Raw's franchise player, the franchise champion on the red brand. Then, Drew McIntyre celebrating, he leaves up the ramp. And then we just hear someone over the mic goes, No, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Into the ring crawls bomb ass Baron Corbin. And he goes, Look, I know what you're wondering. Corbin, if you're so poor, how have you got here in the United Kingdom? Well, you see. Some of the security in some of the airports in the in the States. They're not as great as they like to pretend they are. I snuck into some into some luggage, 
because I couldn't miss out on this show. Now, now, now. I know that the Pound has not been having such a good time recently, but I'm still, I'd am still i still like to accept any donations of any pounds that you have to give me, because I really need to you know the people back in America seem to be a lot more harsh and not want to give me any of their dollars. But you, I've always loved the British, you know, you and your manky teeth. You're like, you really don't spend money on denti- dental care. So you've got nothing to save up for. Podium rises up on the stage, and then he bangs the gavel, and he goes, Corbin, 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 you snuck in some luggage to fly all the way from the United States of America to the UK to beg for money. Well, if you think any of these people here in Cardiff tonight are going to give you any of their pounds, well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Because you see, you're right, Corbs. We don't spend money on dental care and me- and <laughs> medical care. We get that shit for free. And as much as you would love free handouts, Corbin, you don't deserve free, free handouts because you've been an insufferable wanker for the past six years. And then he's, he's like, isn't that right, Cor- Cardiff? And Barrett points at him with the gavel. He's like, Corbin is a wanker. Corbin is a wanker. Na 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 na. <laughs> and then the crowd obviously all just rains that down on Corbin. And he goes, uh, but, but you know what? No, I'd screw you, guy. Like, uh, I wish I wasn't even here. I'm only here because I, I thought I could uh, you know, enjoy your crappy show, you know? No Corbin, no, no one cares anyway. And then as he rolls out of the ring, he sort of like trips up over the ropes. Everyone goes, way. <laughs> just a fun segment I wanted I had to get Corbin on the show in some way and that seemed the most fitting and fun now 97 rated segment to hype up the feud between Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's title it goes back to I guess evolution when Rhea got hurt and Sonya took the belt from her because Bianca wanted a shot at the Raw Women's title at SummerSlam then ended up going to Asuka before the show and now Rhea's back, claiming she never lost the belt, and that belt is still hers deep down, and that she's going to tear through everybody to get it back. She tore through, I think, Sonya, Julia, Scarlet, Nova, and that's about it so far, because she's been trying to target Bianca. But, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, for the first time on the main roster, going to go at it one-on-one for the Raw Women's title. Huh? 73? Lack of psycho. Apparently, it got. Apparently, 14 minutes this match goes, and it says the match had very little drama or flow to it, as nobody in the ring had the psychology to take, pro- take control properly. Am I going to have to send everybody to psychology school again? Because this is getting silly now. They both score 86s individually. And. In 14 minutes and one second, I imagine like the finish would be something like Bianca gets Rhea up for the KOD, Rhea lands on her feet, boots Bianca, charges at Bianca for a second boot, she ducks, referee takes a bump, Bianca then hits the KOD, gets the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 count or whatever, and then when Rhea, Rhea, Bianca goes to check up on the referee, like, come on, come on, girl, get up. Rhea would use the hair or something, like tie the hair around the ring post or whatever. And then start wailing on Bianca with a chair while the referee's down. And then as the referee slowly gets to their feet, rip tied, one, two, Rhea, Bianca kicks out. And Rhea's like, are you fucking kidding me? Rip tied, then a second rip tied, so three overall. One, two, three, new World Women's Champion. Rhea gets her belt back. 
They both get, again, they both get 86s. The match gets a 73 because apparently they're so shit in the ring they can't go 14 minutes. Like, wind it in, game. Like, yeah. Oh, and Rhea has a strong connection with the young female demographic who really liked her winning. Nice. <laughs> Speaking of things the young demographic really like, KSI and Logan Paul. KSI makes his entrance as a Logan Paul. They come out on the ramp and they go, Yo, Cardiff. How you feeling about your boy KSI performing here tonight? He goes, well, I do have a couple of bars in me. And here to celebrate Clash at the Castle in Cardiff. KSI X WWE are gonna go ham, fam. And then out come J Flow, the women's tag team champions. They have done a they have created a J Flow X KSI track <laughs> that they perform. However that would sound. Incredible is the answer. And they perform that ahead of KSI and Logan Paul's match. Against the Carrying Cross cults, Carland and Carrying Cross gets a 79, no 74 even. I was reading Carrion's rating. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't covered it up. You know what happens? Eight minutes 34. KSI pins Carrion Cross with the tsunami dropper. KSI gets a 74, 71 for Logan Paul, 31 for Carland, and a 79 for Carrion. Obviously, in reality, it's a big knockout punch. He knocks out Carrie and pins him. But, yeah, whatever the tsunami dropper is, that's that's what KSI uses. And, yeah, just a nice feel-good cool-down match after the two world title matches we had between them and our main event. 100 raid hype video. The story so far. I think this, I think this whole thing encompasses... The hype video and the entrances, and I think I said it to go like 15 minutes. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Quite possibly. I've had three SummerSlam. Technically six nights of SummerSlam. Four nights of WrestleMania. Two Royal Rumbles. And yeah. We've done The Rock and Roman Reigns. We've done all of these matches like that. This... In terms of stories from episode one all the way up to now, to me personally, might be the biggest main event we've ever booked. Seth Freakin' Rollins, Roman Reigns, one on one, WWE Championship. Let's hope that psychology or injury lets it live up to the hype. 96. That's fine. Like, it's, it's great. It's not as good as Cody and Seth in King of the Ring. But, you know, it doesn't have to be the greatest match. As long as it's in the 90s, that's all that matters. And these are actually two people who can go 24 minutes, 37 seconds without the crowd going, Oh, this is dragging. <laughs> but yes, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. I imagine the first minute or and a, and a bit is just them like sizing each other out, like they stare to stare at each other, like wander around the ring and like mouthing shit at each other, you know, taking in the crowd, rate, all that shit before they actually lock up for the first time. But remember, Roman Reigns, he got a point to prove to Seth Rollins tonight. There's no bloodline out here, no Heyman, no Jimmy, no Jay, no Jacob. Just these two, one on one. We're gonna find out who the better man really is. And, you know, chaos ensues. Spear, kick out. Pam, fucking spear into a pedigree, kick out. Curb stomp, kick out. He probably locks Seth in the guillotine choke, and then as Seth's about to fade, he'd get his foot on the ropes. Because, even though this is two heels, this feud has been heel versus heel. <laughs> it basically, in this, I imagine, in this front of this crowd, in this match, it would basically be babyface versus babyface, if anything. <laughs> But then, as to be getting to the later stages of the match, Roman, he starts firing up. He, he's starting to come at Seth. Bang. P punch, exchange, spot. You know, yay who you want to yay, boo who you want to boo. And then Seth, he goes, he, he gets Roman down. He goes for a curves up in the corner. Superman punch. Roman's one of the last guy in gasp. He gasps. He ooh into the corner. Spear number one. He looks down at Seth. 
And he looks back at the corner again. And Seth screams at him. He goes, come on, Roman. Finish me. Finish me. Spits in Roman Reigns' face. And Roman gets pissed off again. He goes back into the corner. Ooh, ah. Spear number two. Ooh, ah. Spear number three. Cover Seth Rollins. One. Two. And then the referee gets pulled out of the ring. By a man in a hood. And Roman's like, who the, what the fuck is this? And Seth sort of like, he, he, he slowly backs into the corner. And the, the guy in the hood looks down, the referee down on the outside. And he looks back up at Roman. And Roman's face changes from confusion to complete bewilderment. Because under the hood is his cousin, Solo Sokoa. And he goes, Solo, what you doing out here, Oos? I said no bloodline. Bang from behind. Seth Rollins goes low. Kicks around Reigns in the balls. Curb stomp number one. Curb stomp number two. Curb stomp number three. Curb stomp number four. Curb stomp number five. Solo tosses the referee back into the ring. And Seth Rollins collapses down onto Roman Reigns' unconscious body. One. Two. Three. We have a new WWE Champion. Seth freaking Rollins. For the past year and two months. His single mission in life. Has been to be the one to take the WWE Championship from Roman Reigns. He's hit a lot of roadblocks along the way. But there's always a plan B. And Solo Sokoa, the forgotten member of the bloodline, the brother of the Usos, the cousin of Roman Reigns, has just cast his, who, who many would believe to be his tribal chief, the WWE Championship. We go off the air. Solo waiting on the ramp, watching as Seth and spins the title around his head like a madman. And then he comes up the ramp, and him and Solo sort of look at each other. And Seth cracks the smile, he goes, <laughs> And then he just turns back to the camera, he goes, I told you, I told you, I was going to do it. Me, 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 nobody else. Not Cody, not Cody. Rest well, little brother. I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> One hundred rated show, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, so ends Clash of the Castle. So ends the over year long reign of the Tribal Chief atop SmackDown. We're living in a new era now, a new freaking era, you could say. The era of Seth. Freaking Rollins. And I'll see you next time for episode 299. The Fallout on Raw. Who also have two new world champions, don't forget. As we continue the short bill. I'm not, like, so the, the Tokyo thing. One Night in Tokyo. I've, I imagine it as, like, a network special. Like, sort of, like, not a real pay-per-view. Just, like, a... If you get me. Like, what Roadblock and shit was. Like, not an actual pay-per-view, just like a big network special. We'll still be on a Saturday, like, and we're still going to build, well, Sunday, actually. It has to be on a Sunday, for reasons I'll get into at some point. But, yeah, it's just going to be, like, uh, they'll have two-week builds for the matches. What I'm saying is that, like, it's not going to have, like, all the big blow-up matches like a normal pay-per-view would, because we do have Survivor Series coming up after that as well. But, yeah, it's going to have just, like, a, like a stopgap, I guess, for some feuds. Anyway, see you for Raw next time.